At the end of the day, um, I mean, it's it's almost impossible to imagine these uh, this cabal of um, of reactionaries on the Supreme Court uh, to not basically say, um, you know, if there's an opportunity for us in any way to impose uh, a narrow part of what we perceive as the true religion's true values uh, upon the dirty and fallen. Um, a slutty women, then we'll do it. I mean, that's basically. <laughs> There's two ways to really talk about that. There's the legal um, stories that we tell each other, and then there's the ones that have um, Ann and Scalia and the rest of them go, <laughs> I mean, should women really have, really have control over their own sexuality in this respect? Probably not. And I would so, watch for the possibility of Roberts making some type of really problematic but more narrow intervention. I, I, I think definitely that think they're going to do it on uh, narrow uh, terms. You know, this is a long term project for these guys. Uh, at least it is for Roberts. They also would love to get the Senate back, <laughs> frankly. And I do think that I think in the back of their minds, <clears throat> there is an awareness of of. This level of granular political calculation that um, this is one of those issues that could hurt uh, Republicans in the fall. I really do think that that's the case. And uh, so, yes, I would imagine a fairly narrowly tailored. I remember, you know, this is the Supreme Court that basically said in uh, Bush v. Gore, this is a total one off, <laughs> you know, just for this election. And in this instance, I bet it will center around the nature, the very specific nature of the way that these corporations are structured and the very specific nature of this one aspect of the regulation on health insurance. Remember, there is no mandate for Hobby Lobby to carry insurance. They don't have to. They can opt out by paying a tax. And it's one that won't cost them more than providing health insurance. And if this really is so offensive to their religious sensibilities, Yet they still want to operate a business that is secular in every other aspect except for whom owns it. You know, if you're going to um, if you're going to mix with the profane, you may have to pay a little price. Well, and also if you want to go down that road, it opens up. I mean. This wouldn't happen legally, but it's like if again, it's the same point. If corporations are really persons, where is a corporate death penalty? If you want to live out the implications of your religious convictions, well, does that have an implication for the wages you pay? Does that have an implication for your environmental stewardship? There's all sorts of well, other. Well, that's ways. not the that's real. That's not the religious real thing. values. The real thing is women are the disgusting, real, yes. and we need to block them yes. from having health care. Yes. The real religious values are that women have dirty, dirty parts. And it's like, stop getting it. I don't. And we must all, all gather complicated with all that nonsense. Right. The point is we must women all are gather to make sure that they don't do dirty things with their dirty parts. That is the. I love yes. the I the art, the the notion of the argument that Paul Clement made, like, <laughs> This was going to run. If this was a slippery slope, you'd see a bunch of people already here. But I promise right now that no one on the right is going to fund any more. Uh, Imagine if he said he slipped for a second. He's like he was like, well, actually, I mean, obviously, we're working on it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we just, you know, one thing at a time. Yeah. Don't rush me. The slope is there. It's just not that slippery. I mean, there's organizing to be done. We have to do uh, fundraisers. It's more like a structured slope. But we'll we'll get there on this whole uh, allowing uh, gay married people to come into your businesses. We're going to work on that part because that's a total offense. 
Well, and I mean, and I, I, I remember looking at the uh, Scalia case she mentioned about peyote, and it just is, uh, I, I mean, frankly, from my view, the peyote has, there's a much stronger defense for that because that doesn't implicate other people's well-being. But it's just astounding that it is literally the same. And I mean, his level of shamelessness and transparency about the law just being a pure vehicle for politics is... I mean, it's not surprising, but it is just kind of astounding how upfront he is about it. Oh, you yes. You know, Roberts evades and strategizes. Scalia's just like, yeah, I'll contradict myself, whatever. What are you going to do? Remove well, me from the Supreme Court? Yeah, exactly. Psych. Psh. It's incredible. Where do you see how I'm going to be feeded by uh, and they still, Rush Limbaugh? And they, uh, exactly. Uh, and they still get, these are the traditionalists. They, I mean, when you talk about that old like complaint about mainstream media frames, the Supreme Court is a place that has not updated the language ever. I, you know, in many respects, I, I blame the sort of legal establishment for not calling BS on this stuff. The same frustrations I had after uh, uh, Gore, uh, Bush v. Gore, where there is a reluctance by those who are part of that priesthood, if you will, to say, hey, you know what? All those tenants that have animated everything that I have done, it's really just BS. And uh, what we're doing is appointing you know, nine politicians who um, come to their, who, who have learned to rationalize their political biases. 